Hey, welcome into the GoTech Garage. Today in the shop, we're working on a 2006 Honda Odyssey with about 245,000 miles on it. It's in here today for a misfire complaint. It's got a P0301 uh, code stored in the computer. That's a cylinder one misfire. Now, for those of you that have been following the channel for quite some time, you'll recognize this vehicle from a video we did uh, a little over a year ago now where we did the mechanical valve adjustment on here for a random multiple misfire. Today we have a dead cylinder, single cylinder misfire on cylinder one. Now the question becomes of what is the most efficient way to diagnose a misfire? When we're working with misfires, we're looking for one of four things. We're either missing fuel, we're missing spark, we're missing air getting into the cylinder, or we're missing compression or the squeeze that happens inside of the cylinder. So we're often asked, what is step one? What do you do first to diagnose a misfire after you've verified the complaint, you've looked at data, you've, you've seen that the cylinder's actually misfiring? What do you do next? What is the most efficient manner? Now, some people will get out their lab scope and they'll perform a relative compression test. It's a great test to verify mechanical integrity and it's incredibly fast to do. Other people prefer to maybe swap parts. So they'll swap the coil and the plug over to a, a different cylinder, a known good cylinder, and they'll swap those known good parts into the bad cylinder to see if the misfire clears up. Which one is faster, which one's more efficient? So today, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set out to do both of them simultaneously. We'll record the times and see which one is faster, see which one led us more accurately towards our direction of repair on this vehicle. So here we go, let's get it started. All right, so obviously those two procedures are very different from each other. One, checking the ignition system, the other checking engine mechanical. But again, the question was, what is the most efficient manner to diagnose a misfire? Now, it's very quick to get the scope out and grab the amp clamp, throw it around there, and get a good check on the mechanical healthy engine. And some vehicles, it's very quick to swap a plug and a coil. You can do it in two minutes. In this case, it was a little bit more time consuming to swap that plug and coil from our misfiring cylinder on one to our known good and swap the other one in there took a little bit more time. The downside is we started the vehicle up afterwards, misfire was still on cylinder one. Now we're no further ahead than we were when we started. We swapped plug, we swapped coil, so we have to assume that they're okay. And now what? Do we go after fuel? Do we go after ignition system control? Do we have an issue with the PCM? Do we have a mechanical issue? Do we have a problem getting air into the cylinder? We don't know anything more after performing a test. Is that wasted time? Did we waste our time doing that? When we did relative compression with the lab scope, we had to get some tools out, some equipment. It takes some money to buy those tools, but they became very efficient for us when we clamped that battery clamp cable. We cranked the engine over after pulling out the ignition system fuse. We cranked the engine over and we saw that we had five out of six cylinders creating compression or drawing current against our starter. On this vehicle, I called up the customer after I found out we have a mechanical issue and he told me that he had already swapped out the plug and the coil. Here's the old pieces. You can see the coil is actually damaged. The boot here is torn and it uh, just kind of looks kind of funny on there and it's covered in oil. Our spark plug here is what's really giving away what the problem is. If we look at the center electrode, you can see that the actual center is gone. The ceramic is broken, but that's not the main thing. That's the result of the failure. The failure here, if you look down further at the gasket, you can see our gasket isn't crushed like this example here of a normally installed plug. The gasket should be thinner because we actually crush that gasket as the plug is tightened down. This spark plug right here was installed into the cylinder loose. It was not torqued. When it's not torqued, the spark plug vibrates. When it vibrates, the ceramic cracks. That ceramic ends up in the cylinder, potentially 
causes damage inside of our cylinder, and then it also causes the cylinder to run lean. A lean running cylinder over time will burn a valve, and that's exactly what happened here. We got out the old bore scope next, put this down into the hole, turned our, our camera around here to take a look, and you can see here in this picture, as we're looking inside of cylinder one, we have a burned exhaust valve. To wrap it up, it is an incredibly efficient test to perform that relative compression. It should be one of the first things that you do when diagnosing a misfire, but I wouldn't just stop at misfires. Cranking, uh, cranking no start conditions also are a great example, a great place to use your relative compression test with your lab scope. Super efficient, super easy test to do once you have the equipment and the understanding how to run the scope, that kind of thing. Very quick, very easy. If you're looking for testing uh, procedures to use with the lab scope, make sure to check out our other videos. So if you like what you saw here today, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already so you can get access to our future videos. I really appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next one. Happy wrenching everyone. Thank you.